So next we're going to make some wands and um, your wand really depends once again on your personal taste. You might want to have a large magic wand or just a smaller, easier handheld wand or even if you'd like you can decorate a walking stick that is more like a staff wand. So on this stick I, um, I love driftwood and uh, it's very lovely polished feels nice in the hands and so I've just started this wand by wrapping some embroidery floss around the um, base and I've added a few glass beads so far just to kind of have a bit of dangle going on so there's endless possibilities what you can do with your wand and um, you can use ribbon and lace. You can also take pieces of textile and shred them into um, skinnier pieces and use them to wrap your stick and give some texture texture with the textiles. Okay, while you're wrapping, you can um, keep going down or stay in one place. I'm going down a bit and it's giving a little ruffle as I go. And so you can either leave your ends long so you can tie or what you can do is take a needle and thread and stitch your textiles onto your, um, your wands. So I'm just tying a little knot in the end of my thread. And so taking my needle and thread and while holding this little bit in end, I'm going to stitch that in place. And then while I'm stitching, I might decide that I want to add a little decoration on there. So I'm going to take a little um, button from my collection and see if my needle, yes. So one thing that you can think about, is sometimes the needles you are using are too big to pass through the hole of buttons, so that can be tricky. So here I'm just adding my button. I'm gonna wrap my string around once, and I'm gonna pass my needle back through the hole, and then do a quick little stitch here. So you can use your thread, and I, if you wanted, you could stitch more beads or buttons onto the side using your thread and adding on and stitching and going around your wand to add jewels. And you can also use um, precious stones, any type of uh, beads or buttons that you can find. The other option you can do is maybe taking some copper wire and wire is always great because it is a lot easier to hold in place. So I'm just going to take a long piece of wire here and use my wire cutters. So I'm going to start at the top of this blue band and just twisting that beginning starting point together. And I'm going to wrap my copper around this band. And as I do so, this is also another opportunity to add objects around your wand. So you can slide a bead on and wrap it. I have a little stone bead here. Oops, add some stone beads. And so as you're wrapping your copper up your stick, you can have different colored elements. I'm going to add a little red bead. Now at the top of my wand, I want to add some magical little sparkly doodads. So I've made little glass balls on the end of some copper wire. So I'm going to place a few of these on the top. Oops. Three different sizes. Maybe we'll add a couple more. I like to use odd numbers often when placing multiple objects in a cluster. So three or five can get, oops, lost one. Okay, so once I hold those in place, I'm going to wrap 
my copper all the way around the top. Okay, and then using this other piece, twist it to finish it off and tuck the end in. So now I have some nice little sparkly bits on the top. And so now that I've got that started, now I wanna add and finish it off. So sometimes those starting points might not look nice. And what I'm gonna do here is take a little bit of lace to cover up that top bit. So now I'm gonna wrap my lace around a couple times. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. Oops, I need a little neat knot in the end of my thread. So when knotting your thread, you might want to do it a couple times to make sure the size of your knot is large enough to um, not pass through the lace that you were stitching in place. So that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch oops, the end of that lace together. Oh, and see, I have to slipped right through. Okay. So what I'm going to do actually, a little trick, is I'm going to put a bead on the end of my string and that will be like a large stopper. So my thread cannot go through the lace because often lace when it has big holes. Okay, so I just tied a little bead onto the end and that will also contribute to the decor of my wand. So now I can stitch that. And it won't go anywhere. And as you'll experience, making is a process and it's really about trial and error and trying ideas and trying materials and exploring materials. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, but it all takes time. And usually I make something and while I'm making something, I'm solving a lot of problems. And so then I usually want to make it again. So there we've got the beginnings of the magic wand. And then we can just add um, other elements on there. So maybe I'm really into feathers and birds, and maybe I wanna have um, bird feathers wrapped around my wand. It's all um, entirely up to you and your personal taste. I'll just attach one of them on here like this. So taking my handy copper wire and glass balls, I'm just gonna wrap that tightly to my wand. So once again, using found objects that you can find around the house or at the beach, driftwood, seashells, um, old buttons and beads, embroidery floss, ribbon and lace. Um, and then also once again, like these objects are something that you can keep but um, and for long term or if you would like you can also take natural objects and add in say like a little flower cluster on the side all depends on what you're going to use it for